Hey, hi, hello, and welcome to yet another video. And in this one, I'm going to be showing you how to use SwiftUI's new scroll transitions. One of the most searched things with SwiftUI is actually how to make an animated carousel, a scaling carousel, a whole bunch of different cool scroll view animations. And with scroll transitions, it's actually so much easier. You can do it all in almost a few lines, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So we're gonna jump straight into Xcode, and I've got a new file here for us to play around with. So I'm going to go ahead and create a scroll view. And I'm just going to create a sample card item for us to show. So struct card item, and this is just going to have an ID of type int and make it identifiable. And then I'm going to create an array of these card items. And then to display these, I'm going to create an H stack inside of my scroll view. So I'll create a lazy H stack. And I will then for each through all of my cards, and I'm going to display a rounded rectangle of corner radius, let's say 25. The fill, I'm going to say ultra thin material. And then for my scroll view, I'm going to add a cool background. I'll make it a linear gradient and our colors are going to be purple and blue. And our start point is going to be at the top and the end is going to be at the bottom. Now we're going to make sure that we say our scroll view is going to be horizontal and that should take the full width. And we pretty much have these items here. And another cool feature that SwiftUI comes with for scroll views is the container relative frame. So if I actually add a container relative frame to my rounded rectangle, it'll span that rectangle over the entire frame. And I realized I chose black instead of blue. That looks a lot better. One other thing we have is scroll view padding. And I mentioned this in a recent tweet, but essentially if you add a content margin and we'll say maybe like, I'll give it 20, it basically gives you padding on your scroll view. And now I have a whole bunch of these cards that pretty much fit the width minus that padding. It's great because this used to take so much more effort than this and it would almost be really finicky to get it right. This is where it gets really interesting and we can use the scroll transition. Now the way scroll transition works is based on phases. There are actually three phases in the scroll transition. There's the top leading, the identity and the bottom trailing. Top leading means that this element would be the top item in a vertical scroll view and the leading element of a horizontal scroll view. Same with bottom trailing. It would be the bottom in a vertical scroll view and the trailing in a horizontal scroll view. The identity is the one in between. Essentially your main item, the one that's most visible in the screen at any given point. So we can then say scroll transition and it gives us an effect. So we can say content and our phase. We can see phase Dot identity. So is identity. This tells us if it's the middle and main card. And there is also the ability to work based on the value. To model it for you on the screen, at this point, if we look at the three cards here, the phase value for this card here is zero. The phase value for this card here is minus one. And the card over here is positive one. And we'll be using that to control the different animations that we use. One thing you don't want to forget is telling your scroll transition which axes you want the transition to happen on. And here we're scrolling horizontally, so we want to make sure that it knows our axis is horizontal. And then we'll say our content dot scale effect. And I'm going to add a simple scale effect. We'll say phase is identity. The scale will be one, otherwise 0 0.8. And same thing for our y-axis is identity one, otherwise 0 0.8. Looks like I got the ternary messed up here, but now if we scroll, as you can see, now the scroll works really nicely and you've got that scaling animation there. Now I'm also going to go here and say scroll indicator visibility and hide our scroll indicators. So now they don't show up. And the last cool thing that I wanna do is I wanna add a 3D effect as we're scrolling through this. So this is really easy. We're going to say content dot rotate 3D. So 3D rotation, degrees. And for the degrees, I wanna use the phase value. So I'm going to get phase value, multiply that by let's say minus 30. And then we get to choose our axes. So we have the X, we'll say we don't want anything to happen on that one. Y, we do want the Y to rotate and we'll leave the Z untouched as well. And now it looks like you have a sort of cube animation going on there. So now it's like it's rotating in a cube. If you wanna see this a little better, we can just add a stroke of let's say white. And there you have it. Look at the way that that's animating, that's super cool. I'm actually going to change this to phase.value. And then just look at that. Look how nice that animation is. It's just coming in from the top 
and animating in 3D. That looks awesome. Something like this would have taken so much more code, so much more effort to write in standard Swift UI. But now with scroll transitions, you can animate pretty much however you want. And now you've got a really nice animation you can add to any of your scroll views. Now, I hope you enjoyed this transition. And if you do have any others that you wanna recommend or send over some designs that you wanna see me put into Swift UI, feel free to drop a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video. Of course, it always helps out. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.